Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Atif Aga. He's a technology specialist doing data analytics and an avid runner. He's based in Chicago. I have Rabbi Yonason Goldson. He's the ethics ninja and the hitchhiking rabbi. He is a retired high school teacher, and now he helps companies create a culture of ethics and is the founder and co-founder of two interesting podcasts. Finally, I have Dr. Wayne Buchanan. He's a geek who loves people and teaching, a recovering university professor, and a trainer working with human development professionals. The question I have today, machines learn from existing information that is either in the public domain or privately owned. Who owns the output of those machines and why? Wayne, can you kick us off? Yeah, I, I've been playing with some of these AI art generating tools and had that same sort of of dilemma of the copyright law says if there's no human involved, nobody can copyright that. It is public domain, mm -hmm. or at least in the US. The, the flip side of, well, ethically, these artists, these content creators have generated this content and now it's being remixed into these new outputs that is definitely a, an ethical question and i have definitely settled into the vibe of you know what if i as an artist decide to emulate someone else's style that's 100 percent fine why is that different if i happen to have software doing that for me i don't know yeah so i i think it's a great discussion i think there's just so many moving pieces to it and before we can jump into really who owns it, we need to understand what's really happening. And I, I do agree that there has to be some laws and governance around how this data is being captured in the first place. Do we have consent from people who we're getting the data from? And secondly, how, what is the intention for, for the results that's being designed? So it, it is created by AI. It's a learning. I understand the learning mechanism of how artificial intelligence work a little bit, but at the same time, you can still tweak it to understand what you want to drive out of it. So that's an important aspect to know. There has to be some laws and governance around it to make sure it's not being utilized in a negative way, just like we have it for every other thing in, in market today. Without getting into legalities, because that's way outside my field, but the, the ethical principles involved you know, King Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun, and there really are no new ideas. There are just new formulations, new presentations, and we all, or those of us who are creative, we all draw on the works of others, the ideas of others, the styles of others in creating our, our art, our writing, our, our ideas, and presenting them. So the question here is... AI, a manufactured system for creativity, or is it in some way co-opting other people's property and presenting it as something that's original? And that's a really fuzzy line. I, 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 I hate coming down on a shrug my shoulder. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> kind of conclusion. Yes, I, I think it's it's a very broad topic. You could still narrow it down to certain elements, like we chat GPD. I think you we all heard of that. Got five million users in five days, more than anything ever in the world, because it can do all so much work. It can generate code for you that you would otherwise have to. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But uh, at the same time, it's a self-learning of the artificial intelligence is really mind-boggling. It surpasses any hu individual human or group of humans to what they could accomplish together. They just can't. There's another question to it from an ethical standpoint. Are we ready to understand and accept what artificial intelligence might tell us about us? I mean, if we look at what is the purpose of copyright laws, it's to protect creatives. I'm going to put effort, energy, thought, my own soul into what I create. And I want to be able to own that and be rewarded from it. Mm -hmm. And once we have machines doing this, is that not in some way subverting the whole concept of intellectual property laws, which may then mm -hmm. discourage 
dis disincentivize creativity and, and do we want to go there as a society? Mm. Well, and circling back to the ownership, right now, a lot of the output is either indistinguishable from the masters or it's something a talented high schooler might have written. The artist saying, hey, you're being influenced by my art as the input, especially in context, say, in the style of, insert name here, hmm. as a prompt, yeah, that does raise a question. Okay, so now we're very intentionally trying something that matches that input from these individuals. Mm -hmm. Do we find that the, the artists at the very least need to have that control? Okay, if you put that prompt in and, and this artist has opted out of the system, does that mean that now we can't generate those things? But generating new creative things, I think we will see a point where the machine learning algorithms will actually tap into areas that we haven't as humans directly explored. Mm. So I think we'll end up with these new styles that come out of that, that no one had human input on ever. I but take it to another, uh, I'm going to turn the word, algorithms. So algorithms are going to be owned by the developers and the designers and the data scientists, but the output is not going to be owned by anybody. If you can design the same algorithm and that I've masterminded the design, well, my algorithm is going to keep learning and creating something in this certain domain. It still is guided by some, some parameters that when you're designing a software for AI, you still has restrictions around what it can actually learn and which area is going to go into. So... I think just like any other software, algorithms are going to be intellectual property, and just like Google owns its algorithm today. Uh, I think that's where things are going to be uh, more uh, copyright issues and other things than what it actually generates. The output may be <laughs> maybe public information if it helps the public. Think about uh, the, the Pixar movies. They've got algorithms that can mimic every form of human expression so it's as if you're watching real actors mm -hmm. what happens when we can mimic the voice so we don't need tom hanks anymore mm -hmm. uh, to play woody and what happens when they can start writing scripts that are mm -hmm. so well designed that it's better than anything a human being can create so now we've got much more compelling and consistently quality entertainment, but at the expense of creating it ourselves. Hmm. Which there's a whole other philosophical question around why do we create art? And we can set that aside for the moment, but thinking, I mean, the piece that hasn't shown up in our recent part of the conversation is the input side. Like what data is going into, right? Algorithms, 100%, people who write them, own them. What they generate, that's the question mark. Recognizing that the, the inputs do individuals have the right to opt out of having their information put into these systems. And how would you even police that? Yeah. I mean, we already have Google as the great example of anything you put out there, unless you tell them explicitly, and maybe even then, goes into their systems. Mm-hmm. Who do you go after? Somebody didn't get hired because it was tagged incorrectly by the computer. So who do I sue now? I find that my use of the systems, knowing that I may get something spectacular, but I'm just as likely to get something that is just gibberish, whether text or image, is to generate a ton of things and use that to say, ooh, I really like this and then feed that into an actual human to do the right work. So for me, my use of the system is not to generate final images typically. It's to go, oh, look, I want to, I don't know what I want. Let me generate a bajillion options and pick the ones. Ooh, this resonates with me. Ooh, that's horrible. I really dislike that. Hmm. But not everyone's going to stop and reflect on, oh, this is why I dislike that, to tell the actual human designer I find that to be a really good use case for machine-generated content. The idea of not having to have a blank page, like you can start with, give me something that I can edit, I think is a, a really good place to use it, but it doesn't answer the question of who owns that first draft then. 
But that is our 10 minutes. I'm gonna have to cut us off there. I think this is a super complicated, gray, nobody has a good answer uh, topic. So I appreciate the three of you having this conversation with me and I look forward to speaking to each of you again very soon.